It was the first time and it was a big thing. I can remember leaving Perth for the Eastern States. We got ostracised by so many people. Why do you need to go to Melbourne and Sydney? What are you, going, you know, what are you leaving us for? This is the best city in the world and you know, it's beautiful sunshine and you know, this and that. But they didn't get it. They missed the point. The point was we wanted to be you know, famous and we wanted to you know, um, get drunk and get chicks, you know, like most people in bands in those days. We were no different. Uh, but we also, you know, we, we were not uh, modest about our ambitions. We wanted to be in the biggest band in the world, as simple as that. And, uh, and um, Bond really believed it, you know. I, I mean, we all did. We all believed it. Um, but when we moved over there, of course, we were broke. I mean, we didn't even have, you know, any equipment. I think we had half a drum kit and maybe a couple of guitars and, you know, one amp. Or, you know, I forget the exact statistics, but we didn't have much gear. And, um, uh, an Australian singer called Ronnie Burns met us there and, and um, he, uh, he put us on to a place where we could stay in a, in a hotel. It was a flea pit, you know, and we all stayed in one room. And eventually we uh, found a place in, a, in um, St Kilda in Melbourne that we lived at and we shared rooms. We had a room each and there, therefore there was, I think there was two rooms and three stayed in one room and two stayed in another room. Uh, until we started, so we, you know, we, were, you know, we, we lived in each other's pocket. We knew every bedroom secret of each other uh, and and more. Um, and when we went on tour, because we were starting off, I mean, we used to play seven nights a week, and on weekends, Fridays and Saturdays, in those days, you'd do three gigs in one night. You'd go and do one at eight o'clock, one at ten thirty, and you'd finish off at a club at one thirty in the morning. You'd be completely rooted, living on speed, and. Uh, and off your, off your head by four o'clock in the morning and um, you get up the next morning and the same thing happened again. And all that, but, but there wasn't a lot of money, there was no records and there, was, there wasn't a lot of money. Um, and um, so, you know, we were broke. I mean, it, we had to work that much just to survive. Um, and, you know, we got ourselves in debt with the manager and we were paying off, you know, the equipment. You know, it was a classic rock and roll story. Uh, but we, we lived in each other's pocket when we were on the road. We, you know, we'd stay in the same hotels um, uh, and often as not, we double, well not often as not, we did, we doubled up in our rooms. There was no single rooms in those days. Um, and so, you know, uh, uh, after party antics ended up being, um, in the end, you know, whose room is the party in? Because, um, or, or which of the two rooms will the party be in tonight? And so, uh, and all the things that follow parties um, happened um, within each other's reach, if you get my drift. The other thing to remember is that as anybody who's been in the business for that long or who was around touring in those days, you know, it doesn't matter what level you're on. The reality is it was a wild cowboy time, it was frontier land. This was a whole new ball game, this had never been done before. Um, where rock and roll bands were, you know, touring all over the place and, and you know, the rock and roll road uh, lifestyle that's now become legendary, that's, this is when it began. And um, uh, at the time it was fun because it was uh, almost maverick, almost outlawish. Uh, that, was the, that was the feeling, that was the atmosphere, that was the, you know, it was us against the world. Uh, and a bubble was created and, and you know, th those bubbles now are huge circuses that roll into town. Then it wasn't. The same bubble there, it was the same atmosphere, but there was only five of us. I mean, when we started off, there was no such thing as roadies. We used to carry our amps and the microphone down the stairs to a club or upstairs to the club, rush it down to the panel van out the back where, where we would all sit in the back making sure the gear wouldn't fall over, um, um, all taking speed so that we could get through the night for the next gig. Um, so it kind of was fun because it was, you know, it was, you know, juvenile teenage rebellion. Even though we were just post teenagers, we were 20, 21 at this stage um, when we hit hit the eastern states. Um, I mean, it was fun. It was a wild time. There was all the things we ever thought we ever wanted, which was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. We thought we'd hit heaven. Of course, we hadn't.